guys welcome to Brahma school of music i'm taking you through intervals in music in music intervals are the relationship between any two notes not three not five not seven but just two notes consider that uh, the name of the interval has two parts first of all it has the type of the interval and secondly it has the distance the two notes are, are from each other that's the distance between the two notes so the parts are the type and then the distance uh, going the distance where we can count the distance uh, between the two notes by considering the number of lines and spaces between the two lines including the line or the space the first note was on or is on we can look at this first example the first note is in the space f and the next one is in the space c so the space f takes one the line g takes two the space a takes three and the line b takes four and finally the, the space c takes five so this distance is a fifth this is how simple it is we can look at the next example with a, uh, using a bass clef there, there are these two notes. The first one is in the, the line B and the next one is in the line D. So the line B takes one, the space uh, the space E takes two, and not space E actually, but the space C. And then the line D takes three. So this distance is a third. That's how simple, how just beautiful it is. Okay, that was in the, when we are looking at the distance wave. But now there are the types of intervals. We had said that there are two parts. There's the type and there's the distance. We have finished the distance. Now we are looking at the types. There's a major. There's a major interval. There's a minor interval. There's a, a perfect interval. There's an augmented interval. And finally, we have a diminished interval. That's how they are. So those are the five intervals that we have. But uh, we are going to consider first the major scale out of all. There's a major scale and there's also a minor scale. We are first beginning with the major scale. For this major scale, we can look at the first, uh, the first note there. The first two notes are... Um, Instead of being maybe one is in the line C and another one is anywhere else or just somewhere, they are all together. So if we are to count them, we are just going to give it one and there's no two, not even three. So uh, I'm thinking that you are very much tempted to say that this is a first. And instead of calling it a first, we give it a special name. It's a special case and we call it a unison. Yeah, that's the name that we give it, a unison. We can look at this. Uh, this one is a unison. This is a unison. These three below also are unisons. So all these ones are unisons because they are lying in the same, same place. Now we are going to look at the next one. The next one here, we are seeing that the first note is in the line C. And the next one is just above it in the space D. So it is one and then two. So this one is called a second. Just that way. Then the next one there, we are seeing that the first the first note is in the line C. And the next one is in the line, the line E actually. So we can say that we can count C. We can give C one. And then we give D two, and then E we give it three. So this is a third. Finally, uh, the next one there is a fourth. Then another one is a fifth, sixth, and we can now look at this one. Uh, for this one, we have the first note at the line C, and the next one is at the line B, from C to B. If we are to count there, C is one, uh, D is two, E is three, F is four, G is five, uh, A is six, and B. Is seven so this one is a seventh we call it a seventh now we can look at this last one this last one is from C to C the line there is C and the space above also is C so from C to C or from any note to the same note just above it or below it but from that particular note to the same same note it's called an octave it's special I'm thinking also that you are tempted to call it an eighth it's not an eighth instead it's called an octave that way how beautiful this is how now we are uh, we have seen that this that one was an octave this one is also an octave because it's just from e and to e again this one is also another octave f to f uh, this is another octave these ones below here are also octaves so this that's how octaves are written uh, we have now to consider now like we have looked at the distance we have also seen that uh, there's, some, there's the type now, which is the major, the minor, the perfect, the augmented, and the diminished. So we want now to know which one is a major, which one is a fifth, which, uh, which one is a, an augmented or diminished, all those ones. So you have to know that we are looking at a major scale. For a major scale, the, the unison, fourth, fifth, and octave are all perfect. Unison, fourth, fifth, and octave are all perfect. That's for a major scale. Uh, and also the remaining, that's the second, the third, the sixth, and seventh, are oh. all major. So we give it that way. Make sure that you have at the back of your mind that we are using the major scale. In the major scale, unison, fourth, fifth, and octave, we give them perfect. So they are perfect unison, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and finally perfect octave. 
and the rest or the remaining ones we give them major we call them major there's a major second a major third a major sixth and finally a major seventh that's when we are using a major scale make sure at the back of your mind it's a major scale now we are looking at a minor scale for a minor scale we can see that there's the same thing which is happening there's a unison there's a second there's a third a fourth a fifth a sixth seventh and finally an octave just the same way okay for this uh for the major scale or for the minor scale i mean the unison the fourth the fifth and the octave are also still called perfect so there's this common thing between the major scale and the minor scale both uh, not actually both but unison fourth fifth and octave are all perfect so there's perfect unison perfect fourth perfect fifth and perfect octave for both major scale and the minor scale consider that also the third the sixth and the seventh are called minor the third the sixth and the seventh are called minor i think you can also see that those are the only the only ones that have been or the only intervals that have been affected you can see that the third has a flat somewhere the sixth has it the seventh also has a flat somewhere you can see that so those ones are called minor minor third minor sixth and minor seventh but this the one which is remaining a second if you can recall in the major scale this second was still the same way it has not been affected so this second will remain being called a major second it just remains like that it's called a major second to the end uh, we can now compare the c major and the c minor this c major and the c minor we can just see that the the third the sixth and the seventh uh, these three are, are, are the ones which have been affected these are the ones which are changing you can just see that the perfect unison is for both major and minor the major second is for both major and minor the perfect fourth perfect fifth are all for major and also for minor the perfect octave is also for both major and minor but the major third is only for the major uh, when you go to the minor you get you find it's a minor third there's a major six and a minor six there's a major seven and a minor seven keep that in your mind uh, but I know you are also asking yourself, and how do we get a diminished and augmented in and augmented intervals? Actually, this this thing diminished and augmented. How do we get them? Uh, I'm not leaving that behind. I'm going to take you there because you have seen the perfect intervals, you have seen the major intervals, and also the minor intervals. It's meaning only these two: diminished and augmented. Consider a major. This is an example of a major third. This is a major third. Uh, for you to when you come uh, or you go below a major third by a semitone. All, every distance that you're talking about here is a semitone now when they go below a, ma a major or any major when you go below it by a semitone you find a minor you go below a major by a semitone you find a minor also when you go below a minor considering now that you are in a minor and you go below a minor by a semitone you get a diminished that's how so subtracting a semitone from a major gives us a minor subtracting another semitone from a minor gives us gives us a diminished so the the difference between a major and a diminished is one full tone because you first subtract the first note or the first semitone to get a minor and another one to get a diminished we can go back to the major and we add one semitone to the major when we add a semitone to the major we get an augmented so because this one was a third a major third so it gives us an augmented third also all these ones are just that it was a major third so it gives us an augmented third when we add a semitone when we remove a semitone from a major we get a minor third uh, when also remove a, um, a semitone from a minor that we get a diminished that keep that in your mind uh, that's when we are considering a major we can also look at a perfect for a perfect there's one rule that we have to know that there is no minor version of a perfect interval for a, when you have a perfect interval you cannot get a minor version from it so what we do from a perfect interval when we go below a perfect interval by a semitone we get a diminished interval also when we go above a perfect interval by a semitone we get an augmented interval uh, we have still to know that there is no minor version of a perfect interval when you are in a perfect interval you cannot get a minor interval from it you can either get a diminished interval by removing a semitone from a perfect or you can get an augmented interval by adding a semitone into a perfect interval uh, i'm very much excited to to announce that I have journeyed with you from the beginning of this lesson and we are now at the end or at the juncture of this lesson. I'm very much excited. I have to tell, to still remind you that there is a major interval, a minor interval, perfect interval, augmented, augmented interval actually and finally the diminished interval. There are symbols also for these intervals. There is major takes capital M, minor takes small m, perfect interval takes capital P, augmented takes capital A or a positive and then diminished takes just a small letters dim or a degree that's how 
I'm very much happy having you on board uh, this is Brahmo School of Music. Please consider thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to support us so that we continue bringing good, better things for you in the music world. Please uh, consider turning your notification bell on so that when we put new